So you've just signed a brand new Google Ads client, congratulations. But before you celebrate too much, what I wanna take you through is I wanna take you through the very important onboarding process so that you complete the most important first couple of weeks of that new relationship between you and your new client. Now, the reason why for the first four weeks are so important in the life cycle of a Google Ads manager, so whether you're a freelancer or a digital agency, and that new Google Ads client is because in that first four weeks, you're setting up the expectations that the client has of you because at some stage in this client Google Ads manager relationship, something is bound to go wrong. And what you wanna make sure that is especially over those first four weeks that you've instilled a high level of confidence in your client. And that is confidence in two main areas. One, that they've made the right decision in hiring you. You don't want them to second guess or doubt that decision, especially in those first couple of weeks. And the second thing is that you wanna really instill that confidence that they've got someone managing their Google Ads account who knows exactly what they're doing. So they've got that great feeling that their business is in safe hands with you managing their Google Ads campaigns. Now, I am obviously gonna be focusing on Google Ads management, but if you're selling other services like social media management or TikTok or SEO or web design, whatever the situation may be, yes, while some of this is specifically for Google Ads, these core principles will work across any type of digital management service that you're offering for clients. And as I said previously, regardless of which type of digital service that you're, you're marketing, the reason for why you wanna make sure that you instill a high level of confidence over those first four weeks for your new client is so that, as I said, when the bad things happen, so whether it be you or someone in your team make a minor mistake or whether the initial results aren't what to be expected or if you've been getting great results for a number of months and then results just suddenly drop off, is that if you've established a high level of confidence with your clients, you've got sort of what you say, money in the bank, so that they're not gonna be looking to get rid of you as soon as one bad day comes along. So for me, when I look at onboarding a client, I break it down into three main areas. And the first one is the expectation of results. Now, this is by far the most important expectation that you need to set correctly. Now, hopefully as part of the sales process, you haven't over-promised because what you wanna be doing is that you wanna be making sure that you are over-delivering on the promises you gave in your initial sales presentation. And it's for that reason is that I make it very clear that generally across the board in Google Ads is that we're looking for a 60 to 90 day window before we start to see any real profit making results. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. And if you've been a follower of this YouTube channel, we know that as a general rule, acquisition windows on Google Ads are getting longer. A big reason for that is because Google is now targeting users much earlier in that buying cycle. So the biggest thing that you wanna shy away from is that they're gonna be turning on their Google Ads campaign today and they're gonna have a bucket load of sales tomorrow. Yes, sometimes it does happen, but by far and away, it takes a good 30, 60 or 90 days before you start to see that really high level of results. Now, a great way that I practically manage this is that at the initial onboarding call, I also set up a 90 day strategy review. And the reason for why I do this is because I'm then able to really instill so the client is well aware that that first 90 days, while it's not a waste or it's a, not a throwaway, it's very much us getting a lot of data. We're still trying to outwork that initial strategy, but after that first 90 days, we'll then reassess our initial strategies, take a deep dive of all the data and then come back and present an updated strategy to them. Now, there's a couple of benefits of this. One is that you are really setting that standard in that, over those first three months with the client that this is gonna be a three month journey and they're basically essentially guaranteeing that they're gonna stick with you for three months. At that end of the three months, another reason why I set that strategy is that it allows us to start to set some benchmarks so that we can set some goals so that we can increase our management fee. And the way that we do that is that we're tying it to results. But in that first 90 days, we get a bit of an idea and we can start to set some different goals that both me as the manager and the Google Ads client are happy with so that it really does set it up to the stage that you're increasing your partnership with that new client. So when they're getting better results, you're getting a high management fee. So it's a great win-win situation. So that's the first practical way that I look to set that expectations that right at the start of onboarding a new client, I'm already setting up and I do 
physically book it into the calendar. We set a date and time 90 days in advance so that we know that's our first locked in Google Ads strategy review. And then the second area that I set expectations is expectations of communication. And what we're breaking down here is how and how often we will be reaching out and having communication with each other. And the reason for why this is so important, especially from the client's point of view, is there's nothing worse from the client if they don't know how they can reach you or when they're gonna be have some times for communication with you. And it really helps to lower that level of frustration that can be felt between the client because they are paying you and also you, where you really wanna be able to give them the best level of service, but so that you're not feeling like you're at their beckoning call, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, now, there's no hard and fast rules here. I've continually changed this as I've gone along. But what I'm generally doing now is that, as I said, you know, we're setting that 90 day strategy review meeting. I then do monthly reporting. Now, previously, I would do that monthly reporting face to face or over a digital call platform. So now, what I'll do with a client, I'll either still continue to do that monthly call or I'll send them a monthly report with an extended video recording of me. I use free software like Loom or screen recording. So rather than just sending them the report, report, I'm also talking to the different points of the report and it allows me to greater explain some different strategy points or optimizations that we're going through. And I found a lot of positive feedback from this from the client because then they can go through and watch it at their leisure and then email back any specific questions. But as I said, some clients still do want that face-to-face -face meeting. And as long as that's set clear at the start of the, the line, we have no problems with setting up that monthly meeting. But then what I also like to do, and this is the part where I like to overachieve. So rather than just having the monthly meetings and also those quarterly meetings set up, is that especially over those first one to three months, I like to give little weekly or bi-weekly reviews. And we do them by once again using Loom, that screen sharing tool where I actually jump in and I do like to also show my face when I'm in Google Ads and I talk them through their Google Ads account. And this is where you can really break down some different optimizations that you're doing, some different data points that you're looking at. So we might be talking about, yes, hey, you're wanting to achieve a ROAS of 600%. We're not there yet, but over the previous four weeks, we've gone from a 300 ROAS and we're now playing at about 450, 500. So you can really start to communicate and break down with the clients and different data trends you're seeing. And the other benefit for why I find giving these quick little video reviews is that they don't take any time at all. So there's no editing. It's, you know, if I talk for five minutes, it takes me five minutes to record. They don't have to be highly super polished because it's just essentially like you giving your client a phone call. So it's very laid back, but once again, it's allowing the client to get some data updates that they can watch or they don't have to watch. So that's a really practical way that you can really overachieve and give your client some extra touch points of communication that they weren't expecting. And now finally, I wanna bring you down into the practical steps of how we onboard a Google Ads client. Now, the first important thing is that you need to make sure that you've got the required access to all of the different profiles you'll need. So for Google Ads, that would be their Google Ads account, Google Analytics, also their Google Business Manager and their Google Merchant Center, especially if they're e-commerce brand. You also may want to get access to the website and you also may want to get access to Shopify. The website and the Shopify access may not be required and it really comes down to what you're looking at taking on for the client and what their internal policies are. Now, the one thing that I do want to really do make clear, if you are setting up the Google Ads account on behalf of the client, the big thing that I would say is that really make sure that you have set up the payments profile with your client's details and not your own details. And the reason for that is because if the client does default on a Google Ads payment, because generally Google Ads is charged directly to a credit card, you're not then jeopardizing any of your own Google Ads accounts for your own businesses or other clients. So once you've got all of the profiles, so access to Google Ads, access to Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, anything else that you think you need, the next step is then to be really clear on how your invoicing will work. Now. For Google Ads, I explain to clients that they're gonna be getting two invoices a month. The reason for that is because their first invoice is the invoice from Google. And the way that I do it is that I get the client to pay directly for their own Google Ads. Once again, so that way if they default or they don't make that payment, it's not affecting my own Google Ads profile. And then secondly, I also let them know that I will set up an invoice 
for my Google Ads management. And that could either be an automatic invoice through Stripe or PayPal, or it could be a manual invoice that I send them and then they pay me five bank details. Generally, what I'll do as well is I'll set up that management at the start of the month. The reason for why I do that is because then it just safeguards if a client doesn't pay, we just work into the contract that we will pause any Google Ads management until they've made that invoice. And then once you've got that set up, so once you've got access to all the Google Ads profiles, you've then got the invoicing locked away, not only for the Google Ads budget, but also for your management. It then really comes down to you outlining the vision. So you're completing your initial keyword research, your ad copy. Now it's also important that that Taking it a step before that, that keyword research and ad copy, you've already asked some questions about what the purpose of their Google Ads campaign is. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna take you through the three important questions that you need to be answering before you start a Google Ads campaign. And then from there, once you've done their keyword research, you've done their ad copy and you've set up all the campaigns, I then generally send it through to the client, get their final approval, and then we're pressing go on all of the campaigns. Now, once you've done that and you've pressed go, it becomes really, really important that you know exactly how you're gonna go about and optimize your Google Ads campaigns. And to help you with that, I wanna give you access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you quickly how to use these correctly for clients. Because when used correctly, these can be a powerful tool to help you with your client reporting. So as you may know, my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist not only lets you know all of the different optimization tasks that you need to complete, it also lets you know whether you need to complete this action every 72 hours, every week, every month, or every 90 days. For the e-commerce optimization checklist, it also lets you know whether this is for a shopping or a performance max campaign. But the great thing is what you can do with these checklists as well is that you can add in your different optimization notes Notes. And where this becomes really, really powerful is that what you can do is that you can duplicate this checklist, put it into a new sheet. And then what that allows you to do is you can write the client name and month. So then what you can do from there is that as you add in these optimization notes, you can make it really, really clear what actions you've completed and also put the date on when they've completed. And then when you go to the next month, you duplicate it again. The power of this is that at the end of every month, you're then able to clearly communicate to your client what actions you've completed. And it makes your report a much faster process. And if you're working within a digital agency, what you can also do is that if you pass this over to someone else in your agency, you've got some handover notes. Now, if you've been doing this for 12 months, you could have up to 12 months of monthly optimization notes, which is gonna make sure that your internal communication is gonna be far stronger for optimizing your clients. So if you don't have my Google Ads optimization checklist and you'd like to get access to this checklist right now, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. Thank you for joining me. Once again, my name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. Remember, if you wanna get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. And you may remember that throughout this video, I spoke about the three important questions that you need to ask before you start a new campaign. And if you wanna go through and watch that video so that you can set the correct expectations for your client, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining me. See you next time.